Our sermon this morning is from Jacob chapter 1, verse 1, and then chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. I'm sorry, Job. And we know the story of Job as well as probably we know a lot of other stories in the Bible. A man in the land of us was named Job. That man was honest, a person of absolute integrity. He feared God and avoided evil. One day, the divine being came to present themselves before the Lord. The adversary also came among them to present himself to the Lord. The Lord said to the adversary, Where have you come from? The adversary answered the Lord, From wandering throughout the earth. The Lord said to the adversary, Have you thought about my servant Job? For there is none like him on earth, a man who is honest, who is an, of absolute integrity, who reveres God and avoids evil. He still holds on to his integrity, even though you incited me to ruin him for no reason. The adversary responded to the Lord, skin for skin, people will give up everything they have in exchange for their lives. But stretch out your hand and strike his bones and flesh, then... He will definitely curse you to your face. The Lord answered the adversary, There he is within your power. Only preserve his life. The adversary departed from the Lord's presence and struck Job with severe sores from the sole of his foot to the top of his head. Job took a piece of broken pottery to scratch himself and sat down on a mound of ash. Job's wife said to him, Are you still clinging to your integrity? Curse God and die. Job said to her, You're talking like a foolish woman. Will we receive good from God and not also receive bad? And all this, Job didn't sin with his lips. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, it's hard sometimes to have faith in all things, isn't it? Because some things we just think that we can take care of ourselves. And we don't really need that faith. We don't really need that power from the Holy Spirit to make sure that things are taken care of. Somebody made a comment to me the other day, and this really struck me and really bothered me. It's one of those things that the old people used to say, it got stuck in my crawl. Have y'all heard that? (laughs) This one got stuck in my crawl. The person's comment was, one person's life doesn't matter in the big picture. So my life does not matter in the big picture. I said, well, I'm sure there's some Jewish folk that might disagree with that because they had Hitler. I said, and you've got Jesus Christ, and you have Winston Churchill, and you have Kennedys, and you have, and I made this whole list of people, and the person said back to me, but really in the big scheme of things, does their life or their faith matter? Yes, it does. Our life and our faith matters. What we do is seen by all, and what we say is heard by all. And we glorify God in that way. Our spirit is a very important part of us. When our spirit leaves us, we're not here anymore, are we? I've been in hospitals where people have died, and some of them, when they leave this world, they have a smile on their face. And I know, Tracy, you've probably seen this have a smile on their face, they're so happy and content because they know where they're going. They're going home. And they are completely happy that they're leaving this world and leaving all the stuff behind that they're here, that's here. The, what we are is our being. It's our emotion and our love. It's our passion. Why do we live? We live to share God to each other. We live to give God to each other. When I was in the nursing home, and this has been 100 years ago in another lifetime, I feel like anyway, I had this lady who was Catholic. And 
and I was her CNA that night, and I go into her room, and the lady was not doing well at all. And she asked me to call her priest. And I said, okay. So I went and called her priest, and the priest was busy. He could not come. But he suggested another priest that I could call, and maybe he would have time to come and visit the lady. And I explained to him, this lady may not last very long, so we need to get somebody soon. Well, I called the other priest, and he wouldn't even return my call. So I went back down to her room, and I said, I am so sorry. I can't get your priest to come. And she said, but I have to have communion before I die. I said, okay. And I thought, now how do you do that? Because this was like way before I was a pastor. This was like way, way before a lot of things. And so I sat there and thought for a minute, and I said, okay, communion. I said, tell me what communion is to you. And she said, communion is when Jesus Christ gave his life for us and gave us a promise that when we leave this earth, that he rose from the dead and that we can be with him in that resurrection. I said, I got this. So I went down to the kitchen and I asked them for a piece of bread and some grape juice. They said, we've gotten rid of everything. We've done, this was one of those weekend things where they just have what they have to have. And I said, okay. So I went to the vending machine and got grape soda and a little Debbie cake. And I went back to her and I explained to her that I couldn't get bread and I couldn't get grape juice, but this is what I could get. And she said, it's about what Christ did for me. I said, then we've got it. And we did communion with little Debbie and grape soda. Because in her faith, she wanted to have that last communion. Because she knew she was going to get the first communion when she woke up. And it wasn't very long after that that she passed away. Her faith was sustaining her until she could get fed what she needed to be fed so that she could leave this earth. Job had a lot of faith in his life. He gave God credit for everything that happened. You know, some of us will give God credit for the bad things that happen. I've heard people say, oh, yeah, Katrina came through, and God, that was God's wrath on New Orleans. Really, people? <laughs> no, it's not. We can't do that. We can't make God the bad guy. God is good. We have faith that he'll take us through those storms, that he will be part of us and that he won't let us go. And even in death, that God is going to be there with us. Does Job's life matter to us today? Isn't that another life that matters? And do our lives really matter? And that's something that I struggle with sometimes, that I think, you know, do I really matter? Do I really make a difference? God says we all make a difference because we're his gift to the world. And aren't all gifts good? Aren't all gifts precious? Aren't all gifts a blessing to somebody? I may not be a blessing to all, and I know there's some that I'm not a blessing to, but to some I'm very much a blessing. We are God's gift to each other. We are here for the world, and we're supposed to do for the world. This past weekend, or this past week, we heard about the shooting in Oregon. How many of us would stand up for our faith, and if we knew for a fact that somebody was going to shoot us and kill us, if we said we were Christian. Would we stand up for our faith knowing that we were going to die? And some people's justification would be, well, you know, if I say I'm not a Christian and I don't die, that I can do more good. I don't want to wake up before Jesus Christ and him say the first thing, did you deny me? Was that you I heard say, no, you're not a Christian? Do we have that much faith? Look at Stephen's life. 
even when he was being stoned to death, he still gave glory to God. Faith brought death, but faith also brought new life. How many of us women have had babies? There's a lot of us in here that had babies. Did it hurt? Nah, felt good. That was our happy thing, wasn't it? No. <laughs> I can assure you men that it is not a fun time. It is a very difficult time. It hurts, and it hurts a lot. But you know what? You have faith that when that child gets here, that that child can make a difference. And it does, not only in your life, but in the lives of the people around you. That child makes a difference. And you forget about the pain. You know that it hurt. But what does that matter? You have this beautiful life that takes the place of that pain. You have faith that their life will become something that will be positive and good. What is our faith in? What do we believe in? Faith is hoping for a better day. Do we have bad days? I think we all do. And hope, faith is hoping for a better day. Faith is hoping for new life after this life is gone. Faith is hoping for comfort. I came home the other night and I was wet. I'd been visiting and y'all know how lovely the weather's been. I was wet, I was cold, I was tired. And I come in, the first thing I did was I put on my pajamas because they were dry. And I thought, it's early, but at least they're dry. So I put on my pajamas, and I sat down on the sofa, put my feet up, pulled a blanket over my feet, and started playing solitaire. And Chase came, and he cuddled up, and he laid on my chest, and he started purring. That's comfort. And at 1230, I woke up and went to bed because I had fallen asleep. We have comfort in different things. We have comfort in other people. We have comfort in knowing that God loves us. Last night I got a call from Teresa saying that there were lights on at the church. So I ran up here to check the lights and they were on and I turned them off. And I get back in the car and I know Teresa's a lot like me. So the first thing I did was I called Teresa and said, just wanted to let you know I'm back in my car, the doors are locked got the lights off, everything's fine, we're good. For her comfort, I knew she needed to have a call back from me because Teresa's like me. And she would have worried about me. And she would have called me back anyway. I know she would. But we... <laughs> I know. <laughs> Where you at? <laughs> but we have to have that faith to have comfort. For me, I had faith that I was going to be okay, but I knew she needed the assurance to know that I was okay and that I was on my way back home. We have faith in a future. Sometimes life doesn't go exactly the way we think it should, do, does it? I can't even imagine how horrible it is for those parents who lost children the other day. I can't even begin to think the hurt and the pain that they have and the hurt and the pain of the man, mother, who did this. If they don't have hope for a future, then what do they have left? What do they have left? Today we come to a table, and we come to this table as people of faith. Some of us come from different walks of life. Some of us come from different faith bases. Um, I grew up Baptist. We have some Catholic. We have some ex-Presbyterians. We have Episcopalians. We have different people who are in the church congregation who are together. And as we come this morning and celebrate this meal together, it's not about a denomination. It's about our faith in Jesus Christ. It's about us knowing that Christ gave his life and his blood for each of us to save us. It's about not only did he give that, but he rose from the dead, and he's going to fix a place for us to live. He's going to build each of us a room. 
And one day, he's going to come back and he's going to take us and we're going to go to our new house. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm excited about that. The thought of having no more pain, no more hurt, not crying anymore, not worrying about anybody anymore, knowing that Jesus Christ is there and that you've got all of eternity just to praise God. What more could you want? That's what our faith is about. Our faith is about knowing what our future holds. It's wanting to look forward to what is coming. Jesus will come again, and he will take us home with him. If you don't have faith in Jesus Christ this morning, if you don't have faith in the fact that he died for your sins and that he rose from the dead and that he's going to prepare a place for you, why even come and partake of communion? It's nice to have a snack at the end of church. But this snack has a very specific meaning. Do you have the faith that you need? I've seen a lot of people these last few weeks be sick. And I just got news for y'all. Y'all are going to have to stop. So <laughs> y'all are making me tired. But we've had a lot of people who have been sick. We've had a lot of people who have been in the hospital. We've had a lot of people who've had surgeries. And their faith is always one of the things that I see more than anything. Their faith that they know everything's going to be okay, even in an accident. Nancy knew that she would be fine. Nancy knew that things would be okay. Nancy's faith took her through. Nancy's faith helped her get up and walk those days, even though she didn't want to. Even the 100 miles she had to walk. Did y'all know if you break your hip and you do rehab over at Moses Cone, they even take you outside to walk? They take you to the gift shop to walk to make sure you can go through the aisles. Talk to Nancy. She'll let you know. She told me things that I had no clue that they would make you do just to make sure that when you walk out of that hospital, literally, <laughs> that you can do what you need to do. Yet every time I went to see Nancy, she would always say something about her faith. It's going to be okay because God's got this. It's going to be okay. I'm going to be coming home soon because God's taking care of us. It's okay. I can get through this. Because God has got your back. Because God has given you the faith. This meal that we're taking in communion with our brothers and sisters this morning. Not just the brothers and sisters that are on earth, but with the brothers and sisters who have gone on before us. This communion is a meal of faith, as a meal of us proclaiming our love for Jesus Christ and the fact that he's building a room for us, for us to go home with him. But you have to have faith. Amen.